Hi there, everybody. Good evening. You're watching NDTV 24/7. My name is Kitty Bahel. The Congress Party has decided to field the least number of Lok Sabha candidates since independence in the 2024 national elections. The party has so far announced 278 candidates from 27 states and eight union territories. It's expected to announce 20 more seats, including constituencies in Bihar, Punjab, Andhra Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, two seats in UP, that's Raipurili and Amethi, and seats from uh, West Bengal and Haryana. Well, this brings the total number of seats being contested by the grand old party to just 300, from 510 seats contested by the Congress party in 1989 Lok Sabha poll. The party has decided to contest only 300 seats. in 2024 lok sabha battle that's almost half the seats well this comes at a time when the congress party's lok sabha tally has uh, gone down significantly in the last two lok sabha polls while the party had won around 206 seats in the 2009 lok sabha poll its tally was down to just 44 mps in the 2014 lok sabha election and improved marginally to 52 seats won in the 2019 lok sabha polls Now the Congress party may choose to say that the reason behind it uh, fielding less number of seats this time is because its whole focus is on winability but is that the only reason the Congress party which is a key member of the opposition India bloc has conceded a large number of seats to its allies in UP West Bengal Bihar and Tamil Nadu the four states now we know account for a whopping 201 seats while the party is also contesting a fewer seats in Maharashtra Well in Delhi Gujarat and Haryana the party has uh, conceded six seats to the Aam Aadmi Party well even as the congress is forced to concede political space to its allies the BJP on the other hand is on an expansion spree from uh, five states before 2014 the BJP is part of the government in 17 states today and the party has set its sights on winning more than 370 seats with the NDA aiming at 400 par in the 2024 Lok Sabha election Well the question today is does the Congress party's decision to field fewer candidates in 2024 polls and to concede space to its allies in various states reflects its only hope for survival is the Congress party's footprint further shrinking and it's left with no resort but to rely on allies in order to survive We'll talk about this today. I am being joined by senior journalist Aditi Fadnus on the broadcast. We also have advocate and uh, Congress spokesperson Adil Singh Bhopurai joining us on the broadcast. We'll also be joining joined by a BJP spokesperson R P Singh in just a moment. All right. Uh, let me take my first question to Miss Aditi Fadnus. Uh, Miss Fadnus, from 510 seats in 1989, the Congress party is down to contesting only 300 seats. in these polls the party still had contested about 421 seats in 2019 464 seats in 2014 but we do know it faced major losses and its tally was reduced to just 44 seats in 2014 and 52 in 2019 does the congress party anticipate this slide to continue so it's making all possible effort to reduce the damage this time around how do you see this well i think uh, i don't know what the congress party is thinking is i'm sure the congress spokesman will uh reveal that but uh altogether they are fighting as an alliance they are not fighting as a single party so uh and the, the decision to end, to have an alliance partners has been left to the state state units uh, of the party so in their wisdom uh, whoever the best uh, winnable candidate is has been given the seats um i don't know whether it means in the future that the congress's footprint will shrink even further uh i don't think we should try and speculate on that uh because you can go wrong uh the congress has has uh come down a lot and has recovered from that if past history is uh, any uh, guide so we should be careful about what we are speculating hmm okay all right let me bring in adil also here adil uh, what would you say what's the reason your party has chosen to field candidates on a few seats only is the party uh not really confident well good evening uh, kitty uh, you know i have something to say before i respond to your question hmm. today india has arguably the discourse in india has arguably become this that instead of seeking accountability from the ruling government we have a situation where accountability and questions are put to the opposition which is perhaps quite perverse because in a democracy where accountability is always sought from the ruling party because they have to be held they have to be questioned about their conduct and their policies 
when they've been in power. But be that as it may, we live in unusual times. Now, responding to your question, the Congress Party today is part of a very broad-based alliance called the India Alliance. We have alliance partners where our goal is to ensure that economic generation, price rise, and the federal structure is protected amongst other considerations. On the contrary, I see it differently. The fact that the Congress Party is accommodative and has space for regional aspiration, so therefore we are a specimen or an exemplar of uh, the true values and the true uh, characteristics of India. We believe in, in a formation which is focused on uh, demonstrating unity and diversity and also bringing together people from all parts of the country into a common formation. But be that as it may, uh, I think we are on a very, very firm footing. We are very hopeful. I do believe and I do hope that our friends in the media seek questions from the BJP and accountability on issues like employment generation and price rise, which has broken the back of every Indian. Okay. Uh, I, think, I think the BJP needs to respond on that track record instead of putting us into the witness box. Okay. I hope... Uh, uh well, I wish uh, we had the BJP spokesperson with us also on the broadcast and we could have asked that question to the BJP there. But yes, uh, you know, the second question that I want to ask you here, Adil, is that UP, West Bengal, Bihar, Tamil Nadu, we do understand it. These states account for about 201 seats and your party is fighting on maybe 17 seats in UP, 9 in Bihar, few in Tamil Nadu. In Delhi, Gujarat, Haryana also, your party has conceded seats to Aam Admi Party. It's important to note here that your party has been out of power in these states for decades now. Well, you've been wiped out from the Hindi heartland states and the party has no ground support. Do you think that's Any also that's the reason the party has been marginalized by the regional players? You are too hasty to pronounce judgments. History tells us, practitioners and observers of politics, that please don't be too quick in writing obituaries. Well, because nobody, because nobody, nobody is giving judgments no, here, no, Adil. No, I'm sorry, just sorry, simply sorry, asking sorry, you a sorry, question on the basis that. of facts. So that's all right. That's all. That's all right. That's all right. You're an erudite and a very seasoned journalist. I have no doubt about your fairness, but be that as it may, the fact today is that we've come together with alliance partners. Any, every alliance uh, involves a bit of give and take. Today, our goal is a hegemonic party, which is, uh, which is majoritarian in nature, which wants to stifle dissent, which wants to stifle regional aspirations which is determined to have one party, one leader, one system, which is contrary to what our constitution stands on. There are other economic issues which are narrated in my previous part. So therefore, this is, this is all a situation in, flu, in, in flux. Please don't be quick to write what is going to happen in the next election or the next to next election. There are decisions which have been taken by the Congress and other regional parties based on the circumstances. Well, that is what, the that is what we're trying to analyze here. This is, well, what does the Congress Party really think uh, on basis of what that the Congress Party has decided uh, to feel lesser number of candidates this time around? This is just an analysis that is being done here. All right, let me, let me ask a question to the BJP also here. I'll come back to you, Adil. Well, uh, Mr. R.P. Singh, does the BJP think its main fight is going to be with the regional players and not the Congress Party in the 2024 Lok Sabha elections? Uh, well, given the fact the party, the Congress party has decided to field uh, the least number of candidates uh, this time around uh, and also has conceded a lot of political space to its allies. Well, they have uh, ceded the political space to ally under compulsion. It's not that they have done it uh, willingly. I mean, beat, beat in Bengal. I mean, Bengal, Amta Banerjee just told them that just... Go away from here. You are not required. I mean, we, she, she, she doesn't want them to be there. So is in Kerala. They have, they have said, please go away. I mean, we, we don't need you. I mean, we will fight against you. And then, uh, they, otherwise, they are talking about alliance. I mean, left is talking about alliance in Bengal. And left is talking about alliance in Bengal, Bihar. But the main forte of uh, the left and uh, the Congress in Kerala, uh, they are fighting against each other. So... That's why they are going to give us make us give us space, and then that's where we will create a space now, because people are fed up of both of them. So is the case with other other parties also, which which don't want them to uh, uh, don't want to give space to them. Whether it was in Maharashtra also, we know how they have been drubbed 
uh, on the seat sharing part and same is the case in bihar also hmm okay w- would the congress like to respond to that adil please kitty you have to understand today there is a distortion of a level playing field and there is a distortion at multiple levels to begin with there is a distortion at an institutional level there is a distortion at the economic level in terms of resources there is a distortion in terms of the bjp capturing arguably every medium of information and communication in this country so therefore keeping all these factors in mind the india alliance which is a representative sample of the sentiments and the aspirations of india has come together with a common minimum program our common minimum program focuses on economy we are not obsessed with one individual like the bjp we don't believe in this obsession with one individual we believe the subject matter of our focus is the ordinary citizen of this country the last man standing in the queue that is our focus so therefore uh, you know you can you can put the congress in the witness box but we are more concerned about issues like employment issues like price rise issues like if you are focusing uh, on all the right issues here adil what's the reason for the congress party's route in the hindi heartland states then what what went wrong what do you think what does your analysis say well please please understand uh, uh, you know in in politics you win some you lose some nothing is permanent read any history book nothing is permanent yes the congress party has has gone through a lean phase over the past 5 to 7 years but we are on the upswing you see the anger today unfortunately since the bjp has captured every institution and medium of information and communication the true spirit of india is not coming out today people are shouting on the roads they are protesting for a better life ask ask a young man who has a diploma and a degree he's not getting the job ask the household lady that she has to pay 100 rupees for basic essential commodities ask okay, the, so you're saying ask if the, the right information is not coming out you're pointing fingers at the media as well indirectly you're absolutely, trying, trying to say absolutely. that absolutely not indirectly directly you're saying it directly oh you're you're directly. here sitting on my show and you're telling me that we are not uh, giving out the I, right information is that I, what you're implying adil you. i have great respect for you just let me answer 30 seconds i have great respect for you at a personal level but i do believe today that the media has become a mouthpiece of the bjp this is our opinion i am entitled to my opinion just as mr rp singh is entitled are, to his well well what the media here well including our channel gives you the space to we air your views we well you have be. we are giving you a fair field isn't no, it adil i'll tell you what i'll tell you what unfortunately the media is framing the Probably question you're giving more space in every democracy you ask the ruling government please show us your report card on jobs Where okay let let mr rp singh respond on that okay uh, mr rp singh what about doubling farmers income these are the issues which okay matter. mr rp singh what adul here is saying is that the congress party t- party is focusing on all the right uh, issues but uh, the case with the bjp is different well what is the right issue let's understand that i mean Uh, building a tukre tukre gang candidate, not uh, not pulling their uh, flag in Kerala because Muslim League has told them not to uh, pass or, or, or carry their flags in the uh, party meetings and party rallies. I mean, because it carries a tricolor, and they uh, said only carry your symbol. You are not allowed to carry a tricolor uh, flag. So this is what Congress is today. I mean, and then what what are they talking about? Today, 55 crore people get Aishman Bharat scheme, benefit of the Aishman Bharat scheme. More than 10 crore women get uh, got the uh, gas cylinders and the uh, uh, cooking gas at their home. Uh, the uh, yeah, gas stoves at their home. More than 14.25 crore people have got the water connection at their doorstep. More than 11 crore farmers get Kisan Samman Nidhi. More than 80 crore people have been taken care as this was the uh, free ration to them. Also, as per uh, jobs goes, more than as per the EPA for data, more than 18 crore people got uh, got in the, got themselves enrolled in EPA for, and 4 crore people got uh, loan under Mudra Yojana. Even if one got uh, job along with the other one, so that will be 8 crore plus 18 crore, 26 crore people. So they can keep renting whatever they want to, but fact is that they will shoot the messenger. They will get space. Adil and we are both, to, uh, both are together in a lot of debates. They get space in each and every channel. They get uh, time to sp- uh, speak more than us. But even then, they have to shoot the messenger because they know that they don't have a narrative to give to people. They don't have any idea to uh, give to people. Uh, they have no background or they don't have any 
बीजेपी I dismiss it with the contempt it deserves. But Kitty, I have a larger question to make. See the irony today. R. P. Singh is a very fine man. I have great respect for him. But please see the irony. Today you are accusing a party of being unpatriotic, but you forget that this is the same party whose leaders have shed their blood for the unity and integrity of this country. This is the party of Indira Gandhi who carved Pakistan into two. This is the party of Indira Gandhi which shed its blood for the unity. and integrity of this country this is the party of rajiv gandhi which shed its blood and sacrificed its life for the unity of this country this is the party of vc shukla and bayan singh this is the party which which ushered in uh, which ushered in the aims which ushered in the universities which ushered in psus which is set the foundation of modern india it is surprising that the party of sarvarkar and godse is accusing the congress party but this is the irony i leave it for another debate Now coming to core issues today. Can I make a point? I'm going to ask okay. RP Singh. Let me let me complete. Let me complete. please please please, please understand. Please, please understand. Okay, I won't have much time. I have there to are, go to Miss Fadles also. Yes, please, Adil. Please go on. There are there are three or four pressing issues on which the BJP needs to respond. Jobs. CMI says that the unemployment rate today stands at 25 percent. The International Labour Organization says that the percentage of jobless Indians vis-a-vis the youth is 83 percent. today inflation is is over 20% today unequal inequality in terms of uh, people is the highest today 1% of india and let mr rp singh ji contradict this today kitty 1% of india owns 73% of india's wealth what does the country have okay. to say about this ballooning ballooning income inequality what does rp singh ji have to say okay today I, i think your response is going richer okay i think you have to give me nuts. some time here let me go to ms fadnes also well uh, ms fadnes do you think the congress party's heart is in the right place the manifesto also the promises manifesto that has been released the promises that have been made by the congress party have created quite a buzz well uh, there seems to be some sort of lack of enthusiasm maybe at the ground level uh, well uh, that is what the bjp also alleges well uh, the uh, the kind of reports that have been coming in that you know in states like telangana karnataka where the party is in power the ministers uh, who are in power they aren't really keen uh, on fighting the lok sabha polls well they are not ready to leave their chair but do you think the party's heart is in the right place and and as you've been pointing out it could actually improve this the, their tally well i'm not sure uh, i'm uh, qualified to comment on whether hearts are in right places or not uh, but the fact is that there are many people uh, in uh, karnataka who have opted out of the election even from the bjp they are mostly uh, people who have opted out for reasons of age uh or of discontent sadanand gowda is one uh, such example uh, uh ishwar appa is another example so if we are talking about karnataka we have to be even handed we hmm. should be fair hmm. uh the second thing is uh, as far as the uh, manifesto promises are concerned kitty my in my experience uh, the opposition has uh, much more i mean opposition can afford to live dangerously it can make promises uh it can say all that it wants to do the bjp has okay. to be the ruling party has to be much more measured in its uh, in the promises that it can offer okay so we should we should give a uh, weighted uh, when we evaluate the manifestos we should be slightly weighted as independent journalists well absolutely all right uh, well mr rp singh also wanted to come in he wanted to respond to adil's charges here mr rp singh well very very small point uh, that is that he is talking about employment i gave you data of the employment she is talking about inflation please i mean look for the food inflation and then the uh, the is a free food which goes free ration which goes to 80 crore people 
But why is forgetting that more than 25 crore people have been brought from above the poverty line? They have been brought to the middle class or they have crossed the poverty line now in this country. And that's not my data. This mm. is again uh, international data, uh, international bodies' data. So, fact is that 10 years versus the previous years of the Congress government or almost 58 to 60 years of the Congress government or the voted okay. governments, I mean, there's a vast difference between the two parties and there's a vast difference between the way the, the things have worked. They are promising one lakh rupee to a woman. We have said we have already created one crore uh, woman who can earn one lakh rupee. Hmm. Uh, Lakpati Didi. And, and also not only Lakpati Didi. I mean, we are creating more than three crore women who will be uh, will be ensuring that there are more than three crore uh, women who will be... A lot of promises that have been made by the Congress Party as well as the BJP. But yes, the promises uh, that the parties make, uh, well, uh, they have to put that in action also. Well, the BJP so far has been claiming that what all it promised in 2014-19 have been put in action and have come to fruition. But uh, will uh, the Congress Party also be able to do so if it's able to come to power, which... At the moment, uh, looks like a daunting task for the Congress here. All right. Well, Adil, I won't have a lot of time here. Meanwhile, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, coming on uh, our broadcast and sharing uh, your views. Thank you so much.